So for those who don't know Kevin, Kevin is an Australia leading profit maximization expert with almost two decades of experience as a senior leader, financial strategist and international speaker. Kevin had worked with world organizations like Airbus, Intel Corporation, Gunters, Business Travel, and much, much, and many more, both small and medium and large business. So Kevin, <laughs> I have some questions for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to answer them. Ah, thank you so much. So my first question is, you are a British man living on the other side of the world in Australia. You start out as an accountant, and now you spend your time, most of your time working with people, helping them to profit their business. Can you tell us about that, please? Yes, yeah. And I've changed my uh, description these days. I, I'm not British. I'm British Australian. I'm, uh, I'm half, mm. half British, half Australian. And there was a point in my career in my late 20s, and I was working for organizations, as you said, like Airbus. And I came to the point where I thought I would take some time out to travel. And I traveled through South America and New Zealand and Australia. And by the time I got to Australia, I was meant to keep going through Asia, but I fell in love with Australia. And uh, I was meant to be here for a few weeks, but uh, you know, 13 years later, I'm still here. Uh, they've given me the uh, the passport, and I, I just I love I love being here. It's uh, it's such a, a wonderful country to be in, and I think during that time, I was I was still an accountant. I think I decided I was going to take a year out to travel, and people giving me career advice would say, "Hey, don't do it. It's the worst time to do it. It's not going to be great for your career." But actually, when I got on the other side of the world, I'd had so many more experiences. I landed up in a job that was paying me twice what I was earning in the UK. Right. And then my career developed and grew and had opportunities I never would have. So I think sometimes we take these risks or these opportunities to do something different and we could stop ourselves because of the fear. But when we actually step into it, it creates new opportunities and, and new perspectives and new things. And I'm, I'm thankful and I'm blessed if I didn't take that uh, round the world trip then I wouldn't have stumbled into the opportunities that I have now, because when I got here, I was working for um, an organization and they were sending me into the business units that weren't working. And something happened there that, that really changed everything for me because I could go into these business units and work out what was going wrong and what we need is change to improve the profitability. But when there are problems in a business, you also have people problems. People get upset or challenged or emotional. I had no skills or no training to deal with that. The best that I had when someone was upset or crying on me was like, well, here you go, like have a tissue. Right? And that just, it's not really the best solution. It's not it's really the best thing. But it's, you know, so I went and got some training on how to be a more effective leader, how to understand and communicate with people better. And that's what shifted everything for me because in, the, in one of those trainings, I learned this thing that you can change your psychology and your mindset. You can change how you think about things. I kind of felt stuck in many areas of my life and I, I thought it was it, I thought it was my lot. But once I realized I can change my thinking, it changed how I felt, it changed the actions I could take and then the results that I get. Now, once I learned I could do that for myself, that became way more interesting. And I, I you know, as much as I love the, the business and the finance and, you know, and helping businesses change that way, working with people, now that was just way more interesting. If I could help make a difference in their life, um, then that was, that was, that was finding my, my passion, my mission, my purpose, I guess. Um, and over the years, I've been able to combine those two together because I work with business people uh, and, and helping them to grow their business uh, through the psychology and the business strategy. So uh, long with an answer, but hopefully uh, it captured your brilliant question. Love that. I love that. So I believe our readers and listeners love that as well. So thank you so much for being uh, honest with us, Kevin. And My so, pleasure. Kevin, <laughs> you had been help your clients improve their business profit. You help them to create cash flow and grow their network. You can give our reader and listener some tip to help maximize their profit, please. Oh, yes, I would love to. There's, there's so much we can talk about on this. What I'd love to do, because there's so many things and we're just we're not going to be able to share them all here, is I'd like to, uh, to give your readers a, uh, and your listeners a free report that I've created um, it's called Stop Leaking Profit, because I noticed so many business owners, 
they're all out there looking for more revenue. But what I find is if I actually went and stood next to them and had some buckets, I would be able to scoop up all the buckets that they're missing and the opportunities. So there's a free report I've created and um, I, I would love to give that to your, uh, your listeners or your readers. So that would be cool if, if they want to access that one. Now, what we can do on today's call, though, let me take, take you through, you know, um, some of the common things that business owners are missing out on that would really make a big difference in their, in their business. So one of the, the first things is, is really maximizing the lifetime value of a client, right? Some people get a client and do one thing with them and then they let them go away and they don't really think about how they can serve them for a longer period of time. And we know it's, uh, it's more effective financially to uh, market and work with the existing client than it is to go away and, and attract and find a new client. So we want to keep our clients as long as possible and serve them with as much value as we can. Things that they need, things that we serve them. So one of the first things I'd like uh, your, you know, your listeners to think about is how can they upsell existing clients? What are additional products or services that they can give their existing clients to help them, you know, help the client uh, on a longer journey? Let me give you an example. I was talking to, um, I, I was working with, uh, a leading marketing training school in Australia yesterday. And we were looking at what they did. They, typically their program would last one year. And then once they've done that year, the client disappears. Now the challenge is these people are so skilled and they've got so much abilities. They can work with people for 10 years. Like there's, there's no problems yeah. on that. So we started looking at, well, what could we do to help those clients um, you know, get more value and work longer, longer with you? Now we mm -hmm. kind of worked out quite easily if we framed it in the right way, we could frame their first program, not for a one-year program, but a two-year program. Now, all of a sudden, if we did that, you know, if all of them took it, then they doubled their revenue. But even if 20% of them took, took that offer up to work for mm -hmm. two years rather than one year, then there's a significant growth there. Um, we started looking, well, what else can they do? These people are experts in writing and publishing books. They don't offer that. They don't train that. They're experts in speaking on stages and um, selling things virtually. They don't offer that. They don't, they don't give that. They Hey, they have a great team who are amazing at building websites and doing SEO. And they, they're not actively uh, you know, offering that as much as they could do. So look, here's a handful of examples of just of the upsell then of how can we begin to offer the clients additional products or services? Uh, and, and that would actually help, that would help maximize their revenue. Before they even went out and marketed any new clients, they could with their own clients. So there's a bit of an example there of upsell and cross sell because across the cross sell piece is selling something maybe a little bit different to what you're offering that you know the client may need. Mm -hmm. they, they don't offer, as a cross sell, they don't offer virtual assistant services. All of their clients would need a virtual assistant service, you know, to help them grow their business, to free up their time. So they can go and partner with mm -hmm. another company that offers that service that would really add value to their clients. And of course, would bring more money back into the business. So there's two immediate things there, upselling, cross-selling. So what, what else, what additional mm -hmm. value can you be offering to your clients um, that they need that maybe you'd be happy to provide? Wow. Wow. I love that. Ooh, that's okay. good. Shall I, shall I keep going? Are you happy with that? Or should yes, I yes, please, please keep going. Keep going. Um, the other uh, thing that a lot of business owners are missing their leaking profit on is referrals. Right? The, if you are doing such a great job and your clients love working with you, then are you actively, and I don't, don't just mean um, you know, they happen to send people away, are you actively building it into your process so yeah. that it's consistent? that they send people your way. Now, I know you do a great job and you would have people refer to you just because you do a great job, but what would happen if we put it in your process? So at the point they sign up with you, we frame it that, hey, when we work together and presume you're getting great results, you know, we're gonna be looking to ask you for who do you know who would need our service to make an introduction. And then when they're at the height of their experience, you know, if we can be asking them. And then if in the process, we can have embedded stories about how this works and how they can refer people. And we actually have a process to help them um, how to ask in the right email. So if we can put the right sequence in there, wouldn't it be amazing if we could start getting more referrals? Now, one of my clients, uh, Luke in, in Brisbane, hmm. he's an exercise physiologist. And we set out this plan about how could we grow his business through referrals. Now, he set an ambitious goal. I, I, even as a coach, I thought it was reasonably ambitious. And he set the goal that he was going to get one client via referral every day of the year. So 365 wow. for the year. And I got to say, he, he didn't quite get there in year one because he got 520, right? 520 new clients by asking his existing clients and existing network on who do they know who needs his service and his support. That's now, you can imagine what impact that has on your business. Um, he's now had to employ heat more people to be able to service these clients. You know, that was, we did that strategy four years ago. 
every year. He's still doing it. So every year he can use that strategy again and again. So if you're not uh, actively getting more clients via referral, and you know, then do you need to take a look at your system and your process? Can we put something in place there? Wow, that's a cool tip. Wow. I'm also going to start to doing that. Oh, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad. Then in which case, you know, uh, and I think you should, because the core to having a good referral strategy is being, you know, really given a great product, a great, great service. Mm. If you don't have great product, a great service, then you know, no one's going to want to refer you. Now, I know you and I've experienced, you know, uh, your energy and, and what you bring to the calls and the interactions we've had. I, I really get the feeling that you do a great job. So I think actively mm. asking your clients who else they know, who else would need this. I, I think it's an, an easy win for uh, most most people, most business owners. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Is it also some uh, affiliate? Is also some kind of referral of of different? Yes, yeah, affiliate can be, and I I typically think of affiliates. It's probably a little bit more of a formal arrangement in mm. that. You know, uh, I think it's normally with IT companies or, or something uh, software related. Sorry, because uh, not even software, but on the computer, because I could give you an affiliate code and then you can go and promote it to uh, your database, your network. And then when they click that link, I know well, you sent them my way. So if they sign up, I can give you money for the sign up or ongoing money as they continue to pay me. So affiliate is perhaps uh, it's, it's perhaps a more formal way of doing that. Now, some people who are affiliate marketers, they, they're not just helping to sell your product or your service to their existing network. They're actively going out there and finding new people for you as well. Yeah, so they probably take that to the next level. I've got a colleague um, who does this super, super well. He's an affiliate marketer. He will go and interview, um, you know, uh, very skilled people like John Asaraf or, you know, people of, of that nature. And he will not only market that to his database, but he'll run ads or promote that to a wider audience because then that in turn helps uh, helps helps John Asaraf, but it also helps yeah, get him yeah. commission for doing that. So I think affiliates taking it to the next level where someone's, you know, not just using their existing network, they're actively going beyond that. Now, that's yeah. great. If you get uh, people who want to do that for your business, then they're wow. wonderful. Wow. Oh, I love that. That's yes. the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I write everything down. I'm going to start doing what you, what you give to us. <laughs> Good. <laughs> And here's the thing, we don't necessarily need to do everything I talk about today. You could just pick mm. one, one thing. If you focus on mm. one of those things in a month and that was your, your focus, then wow. great. I mean, imagine you focused on just offering one additional service or one additional product that you already have or you already could do. And even yeah. if 20% of these clients take it up, brilliant. Um, or if you happen to go ahead and, and you know, ask for referrals and you get you know, one referral, well, there you go. That's, that's extra money in your pocket. So Absolutely. Uh, yeah, don't, don't have to do them all. Just focus on one at a time and, and get it working. Oh my God. I love that. The 365 said, uh, so dear, you know, you just refer to one, one to one and, 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 and it's on already expanding, like, like, you know, natural expand. Right. Well, that's right. So, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So it's very helpful. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> so the next question, Kevin, you have been trusted by Tony Robbins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and 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 you have been speak in several times in his event. What are the most valuable insights that you have gained from that experience? Yeah, it was a real privilege for me to have the opportunity to work within uh, within Tony's organization. I mean, the the guy is very skilled and very experienced at what he does, and his uh, his care and passion for his customers and his community is, is unrivaled. So when you get the opportunity to present on his stage, it's fan fantastic. Um, the <laughs> sure. audience the audience is very warm, very energized, so they're very receptive and responsive, which is uh, you know is a wonderful experience to have to be able to present to uh, an audience like that. Now, I think I've had the privilege of working with Tony, but I've also interviewed um, a wider range of other leading experts in the industry and, you know, New York Times bestselling authors, presidential advisors, people who, you know, sold their business for $135 million, people who have, you know, worked in, you know, at Harvard, you know, as a psychologist, you know, in the business school. So I've had the privilege of interviewing a lot of those different people and, you know, I'm working with Tony and I've learned a wide array of things and I wonder what's, what's the most important to say. You know, I had this really valuable lesson um, 
because I've coached a lot of very senior people, senior leaders, you know, and executives and organizations. I even had the privilege at one point of being in a, you know, coaching session with the Admiral of the US Navy. And I think I learned something. I kind of had this uh, vision that when people get to that status and that level, like they've got everything sorted. Like they, they think, you know, there's no obstacles, no problems for them. But what I actually learned in those calls is even those people have fears and doubts and beliefs, and even they feel like they're not good enough. Imagine you're an advisor oh. to the president and you still don't feel good enough, oh. right? So I just want to kind of share it. It was kind of like a great equalizer for me, which is that everyone has that belief on some level that they're not good mm. enough. Everyone has that belief on some level that they fear that, you know, they're not going to be loved or they're not going to get the outcome. There's not, mm-hmm. you know, things are not going to be good enough. So I think that's one really valuable thing. Don't, I want to encourage uh, anyone listening. Like if you have that fear or that doubt, I want you to recognize straight away is natural. Oof. Everyone has that doubt, right? Everyone has that, but Hey, there's a difference. The difference between someone who stays where they are and doesn't move on. And someone who gets to that level of success is that mm-hmm. they choose what they buy into. They choose what they're listening to in here. If they want to listen to that belief all the time that I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, mm. they'll never oh feel the way they need to feel and they'll never take the actions they need to take. But if they choose to listen to something else, if they hear this fear, I'm not good enough, but then they have this bigger vision or this bigger dream, like, what if I could do that? And then they mm. focus on, on what they want and take actions every day towards what they want, then is a higher, higher probability that they're going to get there than if they just wow. tune into I'm not good enough and, and then don't take the action. Wow. Ooh. Oh my God. I feel so much energy from just listen to this. You know? Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it was the right the right story to share with you then. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, it's 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 really helped that wow, who are you, Dan? You have some fear and doubt, you know, but it's normal. Look at people who hire successful, who are the world and the world billionaire. They still have some fear and doubt. Oh, yes, they do. Oh and some God. of them even, even more than others. Look, and some, sometimes some of those fears or doubts is the very thing that drives them, mm. right? It's the very thing mm-hmm. that keeps them moving forward. It's their beliefs to, and associations to, to drive yeah, them. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's and right. overcome fear. Wow. Yeah. And overcome fear. Yeah. And, and keep going even in spite of the fear. I think it's right. Now, let's think about someone who's super famous, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Donald Trump, love the guy or hate the guy. But you look at his associations, his association is that he cannot be second. He cannot lose. Now, how much do you think that's impacted him in okay. his business dealings? How much has that impacted him in his political dealings? Now, that may have positive impacts and negative impacts in the way that he shows up in the way that behaves but that drive to to never never lose that's a a prime kind of motivational factor for him to keep going now i'm not saying that that's a good thing or a bad thing and i'm not saying Mm -hmm. that's what everyone needs to do but i want to point out that different people have different beliefs and associations and that's what really drives us so hey if you uh if you want to accomplish anything or have success in anything i think the most important thing that i've learned from all of the people i've studied all the people i've coached to work with is you have to have a clear vision where do you want to go what's the outcome that you want and i guess the clearer mm. you are with that vision you know the more likely you can get there i was listening to uh, whether you like his music or not kanye west i watched a documentary on him the other day mm. and something uh, clicked for me in what he said right he's had amazing success in his music um maybe even in his fashion uh, and, and no doubt whatever else he puts his mind to but he says something it, it, it was shown him in his 20s before he had a, uh, a record deal with a record label and he said every day i walk to the bus stop I'm visualizing my Grammy speech or I'm visit, visualizing, you know, collecting my Grammy, right? I'm visualizing what I'm going to say when I collect my Grammy, oh, right? And this is when he's on a bus before he's got a record deal. And so he's rehearsing that and thinking about that and imagining that in advance mm-hmm. in such detail, what he's going to say, where he's going to be, what he's going to say in advance. Now, of course, many years later, I don't even know how many, uh, how many Grammys that guy's got. I mean, I think it's tens, maybe even 20. I, I don't, I'm not that close to music, but he's visualizing that in advance seeing oh. things the way he wants to be and then of course he's taking the right action to move him towards that to, to make that reality so wow. um whatever your vision is let's let's get more associated with it the more you can kind of picture it see it hear it feel it imagine what it's like the more you feel connected with it the more motivated you're going to be to take action towards it Ooh. oh oh <laughs> yeah. i love that i love that it's just some kind of something that i also uh tease my client to come back to your own temple, which is body, to feel, mm-hmm. uh, to feel like like Kevin said, 
you know, visualizing yourself, visualize, use your visualization and use the body, right? Allow your body to feel and then take a little step, you know, to overcome your fear. And then of course, you're going to reach your goal. That's right. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, and I love what you said. Your your point is really, really amazing. You like come back to your body, come back to your temple. Yeah, the temple. So what I'm talking yeah. about visualization. You're taking it to the next level because you're talking about sensorization. Mm. Don't don't just see it, mm. like feel it. Feel it. Yes. Hear it. Smell it. What's that? Taste it. What's it going to be like if you can get uh, you know wrapped up in all of those senses? You're <laughs> you're even more associated with it. You're even more pulled towards it. Yes. Yes. And even though I, I listen to you, you know, I feel already that this and my energy is expanding because observe right. your, your knowledge and wisdom alone, you know, and, and that's kind of magic happen that you can, <laughs> uh, you know, you can, you can experience that, allow your body to experience and observe and, and, and suck all the right information, right? As, as you mentioned earlier, uh, came in that um, successful people, they have so much fear, but they choose to listen to the right information and they take some more action toward their, their, the right information. That's right. They focus on the outcome that they want yeah. and not the obstacles that are in front of them, which is why uh, you hear people talk about vision all the time, you know, and it's because that vision needs to be bigger and brighter than any obstacles that are going to come in your way. Because the reality is it's never a straight line. You mm. may think that, hey, I'm going to do this. And you may even, um, one of the things, that uh, you, know, you spoke about Tony, one of the things he shares is that success leaves clues. So if yeah. you go and find someone who's having the success that you're having and ask them, how do they do that? And learn from them and apply it. Then mm -hmm. ideally there should be a straight line towards it. But I guarantee you, you're mm -hmm. gonna run into obstacles or paths uh, or things come up in your way that they didn't think about or they never experienced, right? So it's, it's so important um, you know, that that vision is big enough or compelling enough that you don't get to the first obstacle and say it's too hard, it's not worth it. You, you need something big enough, bright enough that's going to pull you towards it. And no matter what those obstacles, you're going to step over them, step around them, step through them, whatever you need to do to, to get your outcome. Oh, great. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, Kevin, do you think a role model is, is, is important in your success life and business? 100%. Uh, and I, I don't think just one. I think multiple role models. Because mm -hmm. if you have an example of someone who's living in the world in the way that you want or the way that you aspire to be, mm -hmm. well, one, it gives you a clue that, hey, hey that's possible. Mm -hmm. right? And two, they're, they're, they're a prime example is a, is a good motivation for you to move towards them. Now, I go a step further than that with those role models. It's one thing to look at them or understand what they do, but it's even better if you can get in behind their beliefs. Mm -hmm. What do they believe? What are they thinking about? Because if you hear someone's beliefs, then it's also going to, uh, if you can try on those beliefs, it's going to help you move forwards. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with a, a, um, a, a guy this week, and he's in one of these programs. You pay $100,000 a year to be in this program, and it's only with very uh, senior, very elite people. And I asked him, hey, well, you've been in that program for two years now. What is the biggest thing that you've learned? And he said, I have this new belief. And he said, the belief is these people are no better than me. I, I can do anything they can do. Now, that's a powerful belief. Like if you try on that belief, if you're looking at those people who are having this immense success and you say, hey, I can do what they can do, that's powerful. That's going to move you yeah. forwards. Yeah. So what are, what are the beliefs that your mentors have? Now, if you can't actually get around these people, maybe they have books, maybe they have podcasts. Mm -hmm. Listen in, listen in for what are the beliefs that they're asking? You know, what are the beliefs that they have about themselves? What are the beliefs they have around the world? And mm -hmm. if you can try them on. Now, you mentioned Tony Robbins. I'll come back to him because he interviewed a lot of sports athletes. Hmm. And there's one belief I keep hearing him say, he's taken from these athletes. And this athlete said, um, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, I'm going to demand more from myself than anyone else will ever expect. Right? You hear this athlete say this, this athlete was at the top of his game. I demand more from myself than anyone else will ever expect. I've heard Tony Robbins say this again and again and again. And then you watch what he does and you see the things that he accomplished. And I think he lives by that. I think yeah. he does demand more from himself than, you know, than, than anyone else would expect. So I think, uh, well, what are the beliefs that your mentors have? What are the questions that, that you know, that they have? And that was the, the purpose of mm -hmm. the, um, the podcast that I did is called Life Changing Questions, because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we think about impacts what we feel, impacts the actions that we take and the results that we get. So mm -hmm. questions are really, um, you know, our way of kind of going internal and asking that question, changing mm -hmm. our thinking. 
So I went out and sought some of these uh, these mentors or role models that you talk about. Mm. And I asked them, like, well, what's what's the one thing, the one question you asked that's had the biggest positive impact on your life or the life of the people that you serve? Now, that question is such an important thing to understand, because if you can understand that question, you understand what's driving their thoughts and their behaviors. So you try on that question and you apply it. And of course, it's going to get those results in your life. Um, now, let me share some of these questions with you then, because. One of the questions of a, a very successful business uh, business person, business mentor, was his, his question was, how can I best serve? How can I best serve? Not how can I go and get the most money? How can I best serve? So he was looking, how could he use his skills and abilities to the highest advantage of others? And when he was focused on that, he was finding the problems in the marketplace that he can go and, uh, go and help with. So how do I best serve? Wow. Wow. Ooh, that's a powerful question, huh? It is. It is. Do you um, want to explain a little bit uh, about uh, because I talking about that I have conversation with you earlier about yeah. how can I best serve? But how, can you explain to our readers and speakers and and and, and listeners, please? Mm. Well, I, and the answer to that question is how can mm. you use your skills and abilities to the highest advantage of others? You have done all sorts of things up to this point in your life and you have experiences and knowledge and skills in your head that other people don't. Right? And we, we take this for granted. Like we, we kind of discount all of the things that we've done and mm -hmm. we don't see it enough because we're too close to it. And as an example, um, someone asked me to present to a group of business owners on how to understand their, their numbers and their profitability. Now, with my background being accounting and finance, I mean, it's straightforward for me. And I, I did something which I thought was really, uh, really basic, really simple. And because I've done it so many times, like second nature to me. But when I talked it to this group, for many of them, it was the first time they saw it and the light bulbs were going off. They were understanding if they changed their product or the service mix, they would have more profitability, right? So something that I thought was re relatively simple for me because I've done it so many times, it was actually highly valuable for other people. Now, I think within uh, with all of our listeners, you got skills and abilities that you're taking for granted right now. You've mm -hmm. done things that other people haven't and they won't get to and they would love to be where you are now right if you've taken two three four or five years to build this skill other people don't have that so i i would definitely want to be tapping into your skills and abilities how do we use those to uh, to help other people and mm. I, I guarantee in everyone i've ever spoken to they've got some skill or some experience that other people want wow wow i love that i love that Ooh, ooh, this this speaking you know is going to help millions of people to to really knowing that wherever they are it's okay you can get better you can do better you can have better but right now here and now is a perfect time to share what you already have you already have everything you need you already yeah. have everything you need you use oh. the skills you have and take what you have and start with that now not to say that you're not going to grow and change along the way but start yeah. with what you've got and, and, and share that because there will be other people who would, would love to be in oh. your position with your skills and your abilities. Oh, thank um, you, Kerry. Let me add something to that. Something's coming up for me. It's yeah. a quote I haven't thought about for a while. I think I, I, think I want to say it's by Howard Thurman, but I might, might not be right. And he said something like, um, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs is people who've come alive. Oh, that right? I and love so, that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. So if um, you know, if you're in a position in your business, or you're mm -hmm. not clear on what you want to do, or you you know you're a coach or a consultant, you're not clear. Look at what are your skills and abilities. What are the things that you've already got that you can mm -hmm. use to the highest advantage of others? And I, I guarantee you can't you can't have come this far without picking up some skills and abilities that other people find valuable. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> This is a million words, <laughs> million dollar roadmap. That's what you give us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my Thank God. That's pleasure. why I love interviews, people. You know, I learn a lot during the interviews. I love that. Oh, I, and I love being interviewed by you. Your, your energy is amazing. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. So I have the next question. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> So you clients enjoy the benefits of your mastery and make a difference in the world. 
what have you learned from your own business? Is I already asked, right, this one? No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. What have I learned from my own business? You know, I think this is good because let, let me take a step back. I because, work with a lot of business if, owners. If, if what you learn from your own business with, with what you have and what is your uh, wisdom, how can you help them to get better results in life and in business? Yeah, there's, there's so many ways I can answer that. With, with my work and my business, I typically work with seven figure plus businesses and I, you know, I really help them maximize their profitability. But along the way, because I've been a coach and a consultant in my own business, I've had to overcome the hurdles of being a successful coach and consultant. And I know you have a lot of listeners who are in that space, coaching, consulting, you know, maybe experts that way. So it, there's... I think it's kind of five things, uh, and I thought about this before because you shared with me, there's five things along the way that um, that have really, I've noticed keep coaches or experts or consultants stuck. And mm-hmm. if they don't overcome these hurdles, then they're not going to have the success that they need in the business. So if it works for you, I'll share those those five areas that that, uh, that people become stuck, and then we can talk about how, how do they get over them. Does that work? Yeah. Wow. Okay, good. So I, I like to think about it is these five stages, you can spell out the word coach. But number one is, is clarity. A lot of um, coaches, consultants, experts, they don't really have clarity on who they're serving, what is the problem that that person has, and how they're going to resolve it. And when they're not clear on those three things, they're, they'll go out to the marketplace and find that they don't really get any traction. No one really listens to them or they don't get anyone comfortable because they're not, they're not clear on that. So we're really going to get clear on that problem. And part of the opportunity there is... Uh, is this combination of three things we need to make sure that you know for us to have a success and get this clarity we need to find this marketplace where we actually have a client who wants what we're we're selling right there's so many people out there who try to um, make a product or a service and they don't they don't go and find a crowd that wants to pay for it but like they come up with these fantastic ideas but no one actually wants to pay the money so we need like um, a market or like a, I call this a a starring crowd. Now, within that, then, if we don't have a marketplace that makes sense where people want to spend money for the service we're offering, well, we're doomed anyway. But we want to want to make sure that there's this combination of, you know, something that we have skills in. We spoke about that before. You already have skills and abilities. Mm-hmm. Right? We want to have a business that's tapping into the skills that you have. We don't want to start a business if you need to go off and get those skills. We want to be teaching people that you've already uh, lived you know, and you, you understand it, you've got it in your body, you've been through that. And then we also want to find something that we have a level of passion around. Because in this, uh, this area of clarity, I've seen too many people who have the skills, they n- know there's a market that will pay for it, but they're not passionate about it. And if they're not passionate about it, they kind of get to this stage of uh, fatigue, or they burn, they burn out, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I, that was meant to say burnout, but I just like I've written bum out, but I mean, <laughs> I mean burnout. The, uh, the other piece then is that sometimes there's a market and they have a passion for what they're doing, but they don't have the skills. Now, in that situation, people end up really frustrated. You know, they end up uh, banging their head against the wall for a long period of time because they're trying to sell something that they, they don't have the skills or the ability to do. Um, I met someone a couple of weeks ago. They wanted to help business owners grow the business and attract leads, but they had no idea how to attract leads themselves. They'd never done it themselves. So how can you sell a service that you can't do for yourself, right? So we need to have, we definitely need to have those skills. Now, the other problem or the final position is then is that if we have a level of skill, we have a level of passion, but there's no market, then it may be fun for you, but it's going to be like financially, it's going to be a bit of a flop, right? You're not going to have any financial success there because there's, there's no market for it. So part of this clarity piece really is about um, making, making sure that we have this combination of three things. Do we have a market that needs our service? Do we have the skills to serve that market? And is it a market we're passionate about? Don't go into things just because you think that there's money in it. It needs to be something that you're going to be sustained. You're probably going to be doing this for a long period of time. So that's the first place, I think, where, um, where a lot of uh, coaches, consultants, experts get burned out. We need to have that combination of three things. Does that make sense so far? Any questions on that? Oh, yes, I love that. Okay, I good. Love that. No question. Then the second one is offer. I think too many people in this profession or this industry just decide to slap an hourly rate on their services. And, you know, and then, of course, they really cap their ability to grow and really cap uh, their, their earnings. 
And so what we need to think about is how do we package up your offer in a compelling way so that actually you're not limited by that. Um, there was a psychologist I worked with a couple of weeks ago and his question to me was, hey, should I raise my rates? And I think he said from $120 to $160. Mm. I'm like, no, <laughs> you, we shouldn't do that. Of course, giving yourself a pay increase is a great idea, but what we should do is package up a product or a service where your customers actually want to buy and engage with you for a longer period of time. When he was doing 120 per session, he had to, that client had to show up, that client had to pay, had to take a payment every session. But we worked on some packages. How do we package an offer that was irresistible that that client ideally wanted to work with him for six months, 12 months, or maybe even longer? And mm -hmm. if we put that package together in such a way, it didn't just include the one-on-one -on -one time, it included some group components, it included some online content, which is all easy for him to do. His hourly rate uh, went up substantially way beyond that. So um, if you don't have a clear offer or packaged up in the right way, then you're not going to be able to help as many people as you want, or you're not going to get the, uh, the income mm -hmm. that you want. Now, if we don't get these two things right in our industry, we, we have no chance because we're not going to um, you know, attract people to us who actually, who actually make sense for it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the third piece. Like we need to get attention. So many of the, uh, the experts around us, they don't seem to attract the level of leads that they want. They don't get people um, who are interested in what they do. And so we need to find a way for us to generate more leads. So in the same way that we use the example of Luke before, he got himself um, 520 leads from one strategy, like a referral strategy. Well, mm -hmm. I want you to check in right now. If you're in this industry, how many leads are you getting each day, each week, each month, right? If you're not getting, you know, a flow of leads, you're not getting a substantial amount of people to have conversations with, then that's going to be the, the core of your business. Now, there's a, a myriad of ways to, to generate leads, but, um, you know, very few people kind of do many. They, they may do a little bit of social media posting, you know, and mm. that may be it for a lot of people. So if you're not generating the kind of leads that you want, then your business isn't going to grow. That may be at, at the core of it. So, I would, I would think that's one of the biggest hurdles that people trip up with. Now, let's say you're skilled at all three of those, you get the leads coming through the door, then, then is how good are you at having a conversation with people and during that conversation, having them convert into working with you, right? Because that conversion happens um, in the conversation, right? My colleague Taki said that. So the conversion happens in the conversation, right? So we need to have a process where we can help people um, to say yes to you. People don't really want to buy coaching. They really buy the coach. They buy the connection or, or the relationship with you. Mm. So we need a process to, to do that. Now, I worked through with one of my clients uh, on this. Um, now he ran a business. Uh, he ran a business selling uh, kitchens, like making and selling kitchens. Now he is the business owner. When he went out to, to sell, he converted 80% of the people. Yet his sales team were converting somewhere like 15%. So what we did is we uh, installed a system a process for them to do the sales and have the conversation and within a period of six months they went from 15 percent conversion to 30 percent conversion now you imagine that's that's doubling his business without attracting any more clients now we didn't stop at 30 percent. there were more things we did after that but you imagine doubling your conversion rate that quickly can make a big difference so do you have a process and are you uh, when you do get people into conversation are you converting them if not that's the other other bottleneck and then uh very very briefly the final one then with the coach model is help do you have your systems and processes set up in a way so you can deliver the, your, mm -hmm. your programs, you know, uh, consistently with reliable quality? Have you got the right tech in, in place? Have you got the right systems and processes mm -hmm. in place? So um, it may be a long winded answer for, for what you wanted, but really five key things in this industry, then things I've learned in my businesses, I have to get these five things right. If my business isn't flowing, it's not working, there's a problem in one of these five areas and we have to come back and, uh, and address them all in order. Wow, wow. Ooh. Wow. Thank you, Kevin. That's so deep diving into, you know, a, a more clarity and focus. What is your lack? Why your business is not growing? You know, this five area of coach. Whoa. Yeah, I have where's, to sleep in my if you're team. listening, where's where's your gap? Yeah, well, and, and where's your gap? Like which which are those? is it in and then there's specific things we can do in each of those areas that will, will help move that um and so uh if you have a gap in one of those if you're listening you have a gap in one of those identify which one it is and let's go to work on it if you don't have enough leads let's go and find the lead generation strategies let's get you some traffic let's yeah. get you some flow if you're not converting if you're getting those leads and you're not converting 
let's find you a way to have a, a conversation that converts at a significantly higher rate. Wow. You are such an expert. Woo-hoo! Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. Wow. This is a priceless interview. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's so great to, to be here with you. I, I could do this every day. Thank you so much for, for all of your, uh, your, uh, your compliments. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so I have a next question for you already. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, yes, let's do it. Yeah. Good, good, good. So if entrepreneurs or business owners stuck, you know, they're stuck, <laughs> they don't know where to go. <laughs> if, even they have already business, but maybe three months, they generate their, their revenue and another three months, they stop or whatever the stuff might be. So what to do about it, Kevin, please? Yes, hey, well, there's so many different reasons that people can, can be stuck. Um, typically, typically it comes down to, to this thinking, we're normally stuck on some level of thinking, right? There's a story or a belief or a pattern that's running, that's not, not serving us because if we can get our thinking right, we're going to feel differently. We're going to take different action and get a different result. So stuck just means that we're maybe doing the same thing over and over again, or we're thinking the same thing over and over again. So we, we may need to find a way to change that, that thought pattern. Now, there's a bazillion ways for us to do this. Um, sometimes it's good if we just go and try something new, take a new action. What can I do differently? What, what can I try that maybe has worked for others? That new action will... Uh, get us a different result. A different action will get us a different result. Now that result may be good or it may be bad, right? If it's, if it's a positive result, then our level of belief in ourselves goes up, our level of um, potential we see for ourselves goes up, and then we feel more likely to take more positive action and it's like a positive cycle, it goes up, right? Or if we take some action and it doesn't go the way that we want, we may have less belief in ourselves and feel less potential and then want to take less action. And that's stuck, right? We take mm. less action, you know, get less results, less belief, less potential, and that's stuck. So we need to do one of two things in this mix. Either we take some new action to try something new and learn from it. It works great. Or if it doesn't work, we learn from it. Or we have to shift our belief or our mindset. There's a story or a pattern or belief that's running. Um, now, many ways you can, you can deal with that. Potentially, you can go in... Um, listen to hypnosis audios there's plenty of those around there or you can get with a uh, you know a good coach who will listen to those stories and pick them and change them sometimes stuck can can shift that quickly when someone else hears your story or hears your belief mm. and challenges them i know i've had that experience myself uh, as a coach you, you feel like you're you're hitting a brick wall and you can't get anywhere else and then someone challenges one belief or one assumption and like all of a sudden the world of possibility opens up so I think if you're stuck, let's uh, let's work out work out why. Now, hey, look, there's there's a million reasons why people get stuck as well. Sometimes they one of the common reasons is overwhelm. People feel overwhelmed because mm. it's just they don't know where to start. There's too many things. There's so much going on, or they've got too many little pieces. They don't know which ones to prioritize. So if if you're stuck because you're feeling overwhelmed, then I I think there's a question you can begin to ask yourself that will help today, which is mm. and this is a great question. You should write this one down. Is what one thing if I did it now, it would have the biggest positive impact on achieving my vision or accomplishing my results. So what one thing, if I did it now, mm. and when you ask that question, whatever the answer is, you just go and do it, get that one thing done mm. and then come back and ask that question again. What one thing, if I did it now, would have the biggest positive impact and do that. Mm-hmm. So if you're stuck because of overwhelm, start there. It, it's the most uh, powerful thing. I love that. I love that. I have been stuck as well. You know, I have so much limiting belief in myself. And if I just do what you said, you know, little small step and it's gain my confidence because I, oh my God, I have done that. It's, it's, yeah. it's easy right. actually, it's just doing that. And it's gain my confidence and, and, and what I love and I wanting to do more and more and more and more of that, you know? There you go, I love that. Yeah. And that's exactly, that's, that's a positive thing. You feel good, it feels better, you do more. And so yeah. some of the biggest thing is momentum. Like stuck is when there's no momentum. If you get the momentum going and you keep it going, mm-hmm. then you're on that track and it, and it keeps happening. And yeah. it's so easy to, to get knocked off a track. Something yeah. happens in life, something comes up in life. And then of course you, you know, the momentum breaks and then you don't get back to it or you don't get back in the routine. Um, mm-hmm. I, I recognize this in my personal life. I mean, now you're saying this, um, 
my podcast was amazing. I was interviewing people every week and getting real amazing insights and wisdom from amazing mentors. Mm. And then I think we moved country and then the routine stopped during that period of time. And then I didn't get back to it, you know, and you can wake up like, I don't know, two or three years later, you know, <laughs> why did I stop that? <laughs> yeah, so you should not trick, stop. Well, and I think the trick is some people get stuck and they stay stuck for two or three years or two mm. or three decades. The point is catching it sooner. How can we catch that sooner? How do we mm-hmm. turn that in from being stuck for a year to being stuck for a month or being stuck for a week or being stuck for a day or an hour? And part of that is, is sometimes in that moment, if you know you're feeling stuck, change your emotional state, get out, go for a walk, do a workout, yeah. you know, yeah. listen to some music, have a dance, and that can change it all. Um, yeah. we, we do this with, uh, with the children, you know, before we leave the house, it may be the case if they're not in a great mood or a great state, we turn the music up, have a one minute dance party, we dance around and we play. And then, of course, we leave the house in a good emotional state because you know, we shift that emotional state. Then they're in a different, they can have a different experience for the day or, or the week or the month. Yeah. So sometimes it comes down to just shifting your emotional state. How do you change how you feel? Because if you feel differently, you're going to start thinking differently and then you take different actions. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank my pleasure. Yeah. So thank you. So I, for those, you know, this interview is priceless, guys, is priceless. And because of Kevin is here, normally he's such a busy man because he have clients all over the world. And today he give me, you know, a great opportunity to interview him. And I would love to say that Kevin have made a mission Right. You have made a mission, Kevin, to learn from the world best in human performance and business. And you also share your wisdom and interviews through your podcast. As you mentioned earlier, your podcast call it life-changing questions. So we are going to share your podcast link as well. Awesome. Yeah. And you also have received more than 35,000 dollars yes <laughs> it's great Congratulations. so guys you see that as, as kevin mentioned earlier pick a role model for yourself someone that have been success in the area or, or where you want to go who you want to be coming, you know, like kevin he's a successful man and have uh, uh been helped thousand of thousand thousand of people around the world he also a great father a loving father and he lives now in australia with his beautiful wife jody and his uh, and their two beautiful and adorable daughters so give applause to kevin b thank you I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, I think the family is, is really, really what drives me. It's so great mm-hmm. to have the flexibility to be mm-hmm. with the kids and, and serve them and support them and, and see them grow. So and I oh. think when I think back to my corporate days, that's what I was concerned I was missing. I looked at the people around me and they either didn't have children or didn't see their children. And, you know, that was great for them. They were living the life that they wanted in the way they wanted, but mm-hmm. it just wasn't my values. So I think back then I, I kind of knew I had to... Uh, to change that corporate uh, you know, situation that wasn't working for me into something where I had the flexibility and the freedom. And with the type of business you know, that we have, mm-hmm. it's highly possible to work with people you love, um, you know, mm-hmm. working the hours that you want, wow. you know, and, uh, and really having the flexibility and freedom for your life. So, uh, so thank you for mentioning that because you know, the, the kids and, and my wife are, are so important for me. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why I love and adorable about you. I respect about you and, and you know, you are my uh, biggest fan and I follow your work for a while. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Kevin, for being here. My pleasure. Really, really have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>